Hey, what's up, you guys? Hope you're doing well. Today, we're going to answer a question that was posted in the forum by Jeet Yajnik. And I apologize, Jeet Yajnik, if I'm mispronouncing your name or your forum handle. But let's, I'm not going to read the whole question. Um, I'll leave a link to this post underneath this video. The, essentially, the way I'm understanding it is we have a common situation where we're making an API request, we're receiving data back. And the data that we're receiving back contains a list of different objects that we essentially want to loop through. And for each object that we get back, we want to create an entry inside of our database. So we're going to try to set this up in bubble. And to do that, I'm going to start by using this service called JSON placeholder. So JSON placeholder is a great little service that you can use if you want to make API requests and get back dummy data just for testing purposes. We're going to make a get request to this endpoint here. And this endpoint will give us back a list of posts, right? Each object here represents a single post. And a post has a body, title, ID, and user ID. And then again, the, the plan in bubble is to basically loop through this entire response that we receive and save each object as a different entry in our database. So let's go over to Bubble. And I think the way that I want to start here, we'll go to this index page, or sorry, this uh, test page first. And I've just put a button on the page that doesn't do anything right now. But when this button is clicked, the plan will be to fire off that API request, receive the response, and then take that response and pass it over to a backend workflow to handle creating each entry in our database. But let's start by actually just setting up the API call inside of the API connector here. So I have the API connector installed as a plugin. I'll click add another API. Let's call this um, dummy data. And all we're going to do is we're going to make a get request to this endpoint right here. Oops. And if we initialize the call, there we go, that should work for us. So if you're new to Bubble and not familiar with the API connector or how that works, or if you're not familiar with backend workflows too, which we're gonna look at in a little bit here, um, I'm going to speed through both of these, these concepts, and we're not going to dive deep into them right now. Uh, I will make future courses and videos, and I also cover these topics in depth in some of the boot camps that I teach for Bubble. So if you're interested in taking a boot camp with me, I'll post all of that information below this video. But for now, this is the response that we're receiving, and you can see that it is exactly what we would expect. And once I click save, because we've initialized this call, now Bubble knows how to map out this data so that we can use it inside of our interface. So we'll click save. And now that that's set up, let's go to our database here and we'll create a new data type called a post. A post is going to have a title, which is a text and a body, which is also a text. We'll ignore the ID and all of that stuff because who cares? We can get the same point across just with these two fields. And what we'll do is when this button is clicked, let's start by firing off that API request. So if I go back to plugins, what I'm actually going to want to do first is change this from data to action. And let's just change the name of this API call to get posts. Now, the reason I changed this to action, of course, is so that I can use this API call inside of a workflow here as a workflow action. So when create posts is clicked, we'll say start edit workflow. We'll click to add an action. And I'm going to go to plugins and right here, dummy data, get posts. Okay. So this call right here will result in us receiving a list of posts, like we said, that will look like this. And now that we've initialized the call, Bubble knows what to expect and what this list is actually going to look like, what the response is going to look like. So what we want to do is we want to take 
each, well, we want to take that response that we received in step one here and send it to a backend workflow, or at least like loop through each one of those objects and pass that individual object to a backend workflow where we'll create that entry in our database. To do this, let's go to backend workflows and we'll actually create this endpoint here that's going to handle receiving data and saving it to our database. Let's call this workflow create post and we'll add a new parameter. The parameter will be called uh, title and body, which is also a text. And what we'll do is inside of this workflow, we're going to have a very simple action. We'll say data create a new thing. That type of thing is going to be a post. And we'll set both fields to be equal to whatever the value for that parameter is that's being passed. So body is equal to this body parameter right here. And title is equal to that title parameter right here. Okay, so we've set up our backend workflow. And every time this workflow is triggered, we're going to create a new post in our database. So if we go back to the front end now, to this test page, when button create post is clicked, in step one, we're sending that request and we're getting back this list right here. And what we can do next is we can say, custom events, schedule API workflow on a list. Now, the type of things that we want, to, the type of list that we want to run this workflow on is actually going to be, I believe that name change didn't uh, get reflected, but it's actually, I'm pretty sure it's just gonna be this API call right here. And we did rename this, but I think because we haven't reinitialized the call, let's try this and see if it works. And go back to workflow. There we go. So when we reinitialize the call, that name change actually went through. And so the type of list that we actually want to say that we're going to run this on is going to be get post. And this can be a little bit confusing, but the type of list that this is going to be is actually this list right here right, that we're receiving back. So because we've initialized the call, because Bubble knows um, that when we fire this API request, we're going to get this data back and it knows how to map that out, I can actually say that the list, that, that's why we have this get post option here as a type of, type of things, if that makes any sense. Hopefully it does. And then because I've said that the type of things is going to be get post, the list that I want to run on is actually going to be the result of step one here, right? And we get this nice blue expression because we're being consistent with the type of, of data that we're passing. The API workflow is going to be called create post. That's the backend workflow that we created. We'll schedule it for the current date and time. And we'll leave interval blank. The title that we want to pass is going to be this get posts title. I'm going to I'm going to look at a, a diagram of this in a second to hopefully make it make more sense if this is confusing at all. And then the body is going to be this get posts. Whoops. This get posts body. Okay. Let's let's trigger this and see if it actually works and then we'll go look at a little diagram of and try to understand what's kind of happening behind the scenes. So the list to run on will say result of step one. And why don't we just say so that we don't create 100 entries in our database? Why don't we just say items until number five? And I think that looks good. So let's try this out and hope that it works. We'll click on create posts. That gets that request gets fired off. We take that list, at least the first five entries, and pass each object off to that backend workflow. And if I go to my database and go to app data and click on all posts, there you go. We can see we have five entries and it looks like they got created nicely and everything looks okay. So let's head over to Sketchpad here. And I've, I've kind of drawn this out to 
just show you a visual of, of what's going on. So we have this backend workflow that we created called create post. We have this response that we're receiving here, right? These different objects, each one of which represents a post. And when we schedule an API workflow on a list, what we're doing is we're basically going through each object here and passing that object off one at a time to this backend workflow called create post. Now this backend workflow create post, we've said that it needs two parameters. It needs a body and a title, right? And so for each post, we're taking the title and passing it as this parameter. And we're taking the body, passing it as this parameter over here. So I hope that messy drawing, um, messy as it is, makes things a little bit more clear let me know if the com in the comments if that's the case or if it's not. Um, and then, yeah, the, the process of this is looping through each one of these posts one by one like that. Now, this works. Um, the challenge is that inside of, of Bubble, you know, we, we created five entries here. Um, and creating things in the database one by one is, is something that, at least at this moment in time, is, is quite a slow operation in Bubble. So if you had, you know, hundreds of things that you're creating in your database and you're trying to run a setup like this, it might not be the best option. So in the future, I'm going to, I actually recently had a, a coaching client who was dealing with something very similar where he had just tons of different data and multiple kind of loops that he was, was going through and wanted to have this happen on the back end. When we set everything up in the way that I just showed you using kind of the native bubble approach with back end workflows, um, the entire operation from start to finish took like 13 minutes or something. It, anyways, it just took way too long. So we were looking at different approaches to get that done. And in a future video, I'll show you um, some different approaches that we came up with. So that's about everything for now. I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.